Hello and welcome to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Monday, May 13th. We are back. We're going to be breaking down this big boy slate. We got 12 games to go over. I think there's uh, some exciting ways to go. Definitely a ton of stacks to consider today. Pitching might be a little bit thin, though. We will get all into that, but we will start off with the perfect lineup from yesterday and the winning lineups from both DraftKings and FanDuel. Now, before we do that, come join us, Lion Star. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do, all the props, all the DFS. You get it all for one low price. The tools, the optimizers, prop AI, you get everything. Now, Let's get in uh, to the slate. As I said, perfect lineups, winning lineups. We'll go over the pitchers for today and then some stacks. So straight over to the perfect lineup on uh, good old FanDuel. So perfect lineup. We had Bailey Ober, who just went absolutely nuts, put up 59. Outside of that, we had a two-man uh, Philly stack and then all one-offs. We didn't come close to using all the salary, putting up 327.7. So just a giant score. The winning lineup was 248. Congrats to Crafty Lefty, 120K. You had Luis Gill, who put up a solid game, but nothing like Ober. Uh, but more importantly, you nailed the hitting. Four-man Philadelphia stack, two-man Cubs, and two-man Yankees got it done. Congrats to uh, Crafty Lefty. Way to go. And let's get into DraftKings. So we had Bailey Ober. We had Justin Verlander take it down. A two-man Philly, a two-man Cubs, three one-offs. 45.7K was the total salary, 264 for the uh, winning or the perfect score. And Navel won the contest with a 190.35, four points higher than second place and uh, quite a bit lower than the perfect lineup as is, you know, usual here. But uh, the winning lineup consisted of Ober and Gore who both had solid games. Ober just went nuts with uh, his 10 Ks in uh, 19 out. So he pitched into the sixth inning, got the win. And that winning lineup was a five-man Yankee stack, two-man Cubs with the one-off. So the 5-2-1 worked once again uh, over on DraftKings. If you have been paying attention, that is absolutely the most consistent lineup construction for winners. Five, two, one. So if you're getting something out of this, you should maybe uh, start playing more five, two, ones. Let's uh, get into the slate as a whole now. We will start with pitching. If you get over to uh, the highest owned, highest owned, we got Brady Singer, 8.8K on DraftKings, 18% owned. I do think that uh, while pitching is a little bit limited, I think it is going to be a little spread out. Uh, ownership wise, there isn't, you know, a super massive uh, value case. However, I do think Randy Vasquez at 6K is going under owned on uh, DK. So starting off with Brady Singer, 8.8K. He is versus the Mariners. Everything on paper looks absolutely great for him in this matchup. The big thing that I need to bring to your attention here is how much worse he has been away. He is averaging 80% less fantasy points away now i'm not saying this to uh scare you off from playing him i actually do like him quite a bit in this spot but i want to mention that as a reason to fade him he is your highest owned pitcher today so you know fading him does make some sense but there's a ton to like here seattle striking out 28.5 versus righties he only has a 3.3 FIP over his last five starts, 3.3 ERA, almost a 25% K rate, goes with that Seattle big time K rate. Seattle's not getting on base very much versus righties, only a 300 WOBA. So I think there's a ton to like here. Uh, the splits definitely work in Singer's favor, but there is just that glaring 80% 
less fantasy point away number that is a little bit scary. All in all, I do like Singer. We have a solid combined K rate for him. You don't see a 26.8% combined K rate on Singer very much. So he is absolutely interesting. Just a little higher owned, uh, you know, than I'd like. But honestly, 18% is not a number that would scare me off from playing him. So I am absolutely considering him. And he is one of my favorite pitchers today. I, uh, you know, just wish his ownership was a little bit lower because I am a little bit scared of that. Now, Randy Vasquez, uh, he's absolutely one of my favorite pitchers today. He pitched great versus the Cubs last time out with six Ks, only 4.1 innings. Now, the one worry I have with him today is the fact he hasn't been able to work deep into games. 4.1 innings, 2.2 innings, five innings. Now, I do have to say the Colorado game was in Colorado, so I'll give him a little bit of a pass for that, but 4.1 and 5 innings isn't the greatest uh, situation. At least with the Toronto game, he went 97 pitches. So we do know he can go, you know, 100 pitches or so. And if he gets into the sixth inning, he is going to absolutely crush value-wise on both DraftKings and FanDuel. The big thing here, Colorado just isn't that good, especially away from Colorado. They're striking out at 28.5%. Super low ISO. Uh, now Vasquez hasn't been any type of world beater. 4.58 FIP over his last five starts. Uh, 4.5 ERA so far this season. Striking out 8.25 per nine. So not big time strikeout stuff. But at least he has that Carolina or Carolina, Colorado striking out a ton. So uh, I'm interested in. Uh, in Vasquez for sure I think he's way too cheap the combined carry at 24% at 6k is just way too enticing and I would expect his ownership to be way higher than the 17% that we have due to the fact that he's only 6k on DraftKings but I am very much intrigued uh, George Kirby is another fairly obvious spot I do have to bring up unlike Singer who they are going against he is averaging 50% more fantasy points at home, or 49.4. Now, KC's K rate is a very low at 19%, whereas Kirby's is all the way up to 29%. We also know that he strikes out more guys at home. He obviously is better at home. Uh, but this KC offense has been pretty good. Uh, pretty high at ISO at 180. Uh, they're not striking out that much. The average is a little low. Uh, the Woba is a little low, but they do have some power. And they have a little bit of a history of getting to K, uh, getting to Kirby. 22 plate attempts. They're hitting 364 off him. But what I have to say is that was only one game, and it was in KC. He still did go six innings, though. He just allowed four runs. So uh, all of that isn't scaring me off Kirby. Kirby is absolutely one of my favorite pitchers. We have him at 1.8x, 16 per, uh, point projection. You know, not the greatest projection, but I am absolutely intrigued to go there. Next, we got Christopher Sanchez, uh, 7.9K. He's another guy, 63% less fantasy points away. The, uh, we also have the wind blowing out to left field in uh, New York today. So a little bit touchy wanting to take uh, Sanchez here with those two two combined aspects. Then you throw in the fact that the Mets are hitting 323 uh, Woba versus lefties, 180 ISO, and it gets a little bit scary here. Now, Sanchez has been extremely good. 3.04 FIP over his last five starts. 3.58 over his last 20. 23.7% uh, uh, K rate over his last 20. The combined K rate is 22.4. I'm definitely a little bit intrigued, but the the fact is there is some hitting weather. He's worse away. It does worry me a little bit about Sanchez, and the Mets have been decent off of him, but Mets have struck out almost 27% uh, versus Sanchez, so uh, I could play this one either way. I don't mind taking some Mets bats, and I also don't mind having some uh, Sanchez exposure. Next shocked uh guy has just been absolutely incredible now atlanta crushes lefties 
and we're keep waiting for that game for him to fall off a little bit. And I, I promise you it is coming. I just don't know if this is going to be it yet. Atlanta does crush lefties. His FIP is, you know, one and a half points higher than his ERA. Uh, and I just don't think he can really keep his ERA down to uh, 1.08 uh, for the season. But he does look very good. K rate's almost 27%. Uh, StatCast data looks good. Braves do seem like they might be starting to hit a little bit. Uh, I could see this one going either way, though. However, I do have to say the combined K rate at being only 19.6 and his price being at 9.3 wants me to come off him a little bit, but I am intrigued. Uh, the way he has been pitching, I got to have a little bit. So he will be in my player pool. He is one of the better pitchers on this slate. Uh, but I'm not crazy about, you know, using him versus ATL. Next, we got Zach Eflin. This is another spot. We got wind blowing out towards the green monster left field uh, at eight to 10 miles an hour or so. Boston striking out a lot versus righties. They do hit the ball hard versus righties, though. Um, and they, they have had some success versus Eflin, just not a crazy amount. Now I'm pretty intrigued by Eflin in this spot, 3.56 FIP over his last 20, but over his last five, it's only a 3.09. Uh, the big worry here is that his K rate over the last five is only 19%. At least Boston is striking out a little bit. Um, but his K rate over the last 20 is 24%. If we can get 24% combined K rate, uh, or a K rate today from Eflin. He looks really, really good. We have met a 21% combined K rate right now, largely due to his short term form where his K rate has only been 19, uh, percent over his last five. So I am absolutely interested in Eflin. He is one of the pitchers that I will be intrigued about. That's, that's the thing with this slate is there's nobody that's like, we need him. Uh, that's just not the case. Randy Vasquez is likely as close and his FIP is, you know, mid fours. Colin Ray versus Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm not going here. I think he's due for some regression. The FIP is way higher than the ERAs. Uh, and I actually don't mind these Pittsburgh bats today. Uh, they've also had some success versus him and he hasn't been great. Ronaldo Lopez, I. Uh, Guy has been pitching insane. It's another guy, though, where his FIP is, you know, 150 higher than his uh, ERA. Actually, one more like 170 higher. So, I do think he is due for some regression. Both pitchers in this game are due for some, some regression. He does have some scat, stat cast data that is a little scary. 40% fly balls, 32% hard contact. Don't love seeing that, but at least his K rate, the combined K rate is up to 23.8%. I don't love going to uh, Lopez in this spot, but I don't mind it due to the fact that uh, Cubs 303 Woba uh, and the splits in the short term haven't been great. Now, there is only a 353 ISO too, which isn't a terrible number, but it is above average, but it is, you know, a pretty close to average. Uh, I don't like taking Lopez. Don't really love the Cubs stacks either, but both are somewhat in play. Spencer Aragetti is likely uh, or isn't in the best spot. Don't mind Oakland stack. Sean Manaya. Uh, this is the big thing I want to bring up about Manaya. 35 plate attempts, 484 average versus uh Philly with five home runs, 677 ISO. That is some very, very scary BVP data. Now, do have to say that it's only 35 plate attempts, so a lot can change. And he has been a decent pitcher, 4.18 FIP over the last five, 3.85 over the last 20. Uh, but his strikeout rate has fallen off a cliff lately. And if he's not missing bats in Philly or versus Philly with the winds blowing out, it could be a bit scary for him. I think those Philly bats are fairly interesting. Keller just pitched a gem, but I don't love this spot for him at 9.2. Tanner Beebe is a little bit, or 
uh, Bybee, sorry, is a little bit interesting at 8.4K at 1.9X, but he's going against this Texas Rangers offense that's pretty good. He is at least better away. Uh, Texas also is better at home, though. So it's a little bit of a give and a take there. His stat cast data is a little worrisome, though. Uh, so I don't love it. And Jordan Montgomery, I think it's only a matter of time till uh, he's in a real nice spot. And that 7.5K salary is enticing. He's now, you know, pitched four games in the big leagues. After missing spring training, I think he is starting to round into form. Now, Cincinnati hits lefties hard, but at least they strike out at 23%. I am slightly intrigued by taking some uh, Montgomery, but once again, don't love it. Uh, also slightly intrigued by Cutter Crawford. Crawford's been pitching absolutely uh, amazing. 3.03 FIP over his last 20. 2.99 over his last five. 26% K rate over his last 20. 22% K rate over his last five. Now the stat cast data is very scary. 49% fly balls nine barrel balls but at least he's limiting hard contact the big worry for me is how much worse he's been at home 50 percent less fantasy points at home i do kind of like this matchup though for cutter crawford so i'm definitely intrigued at very low ownership and just hoping he does have you know one of those good performances at home which he totally can he is only 8.6k uh tampa hasn't been that great of an offense so I'm intrigued, definitely not going all in, but 2X value with uh, low ownership is intriguing. Uh, lastly, I know there's probably gonna be talk some uh, of Gavin Stone here, but I do have to bring up this aspect. His FIP 4.32 over his last five starts is 2.2 points higher than his ERA. There is going to be some regression. Now, this Giants team has been Pretty bad hitting the ball lately. 2.94 uh, Woba, 130 ISO. I don't love this Giants offense, but I do think some regression is coming to Stone. With his low K rate, I just can't get there at, when he is at 8.1 K. Uh, I know people are going to talk about him, so I wanted to bring that aspect up. Now, let's do a quick FanDuel rundown before we get into some stacks. So pitchers, highest owned pitcher, Brady Singer, 9.3K. Look, him and Kirby are likely two of my favorite pitchers on this slate. Probably going to have a decent amount of both of them. Uh, Shata looks fine. 10K versus the Braves, though, has me a little worried. Next, we got Sean Manaya. I don't love the spot versus Philly. I actually like the Philly offense quite a bit. Randy Vasquez, 7K. Uh, I'm going to probably have a lot of Vasquez. I, I think that he's going to low owned and I'm pretty intrigued by the profile in this matchup. And one thing I got to bring up again, especially with it being on FanDuel is he hasn't worked into the sixth inning and he's only been into the five. He only finished the fifth inning once and we need that to happen to at least get the win. That win and that quality start bonus is big, but his strikeout line for today is at least at 5.5. So if he's able to get five, six strikeouts, get the win at only 7K, he's a little bit interesting if you want to pay up for some bats. Uh, I'm a little bit intrigued by, by Vasquez for sure, as I am with Eflin and uh, Cutter Crawford as other kind of low-owned pivots. Uh, everybody else below here, I... You know, the ones I talk about on DraftKings, I'm still interested here. A little interest on, on Sanchez. Uh, we didn't talk about Graham Ashcroft, but uh, slightly, cons you know, interested to go this way. He is better away, 28% more fantasy points. Arizona's ISO is low. Their WOBA is low. He has a 3.8 FIP, so he's been pitching decent. The only worry here is just his K rate just isn't that high. And so... Uh, I do worry about his upside a bit. And let's get into the stacks. Let's get into the fun part. All 
All right, so highest ceiling for the night is the Dodgers versus Jordan Hicks. Now, Jordan Hicks has been very, very good, so he's not somebody that I really want to stack against. However, at least the Dodgers are low-owned. Uh, Hicks isn't likely to work super deep into this game, so you get that Giants bullpen, which is a little interesting to uh, stack against. And, frankly, the top of this Dodgers order can hit anybody there just insanely good. Uh, the issue there that I see how expensive the Dodgers are going to be kind of hard to get there. Oakland versus Arigetti. I am super intrigued by Oakland in this matchup. Arigetti hasn't been good. 5.12 FIP, uh, allowing 2.59 fantasy or 4.8 fantasy point per minute. Uh, so Oakland is kind of intriguing. They've been hitting the ball well, uh, like them a little bit. Philadelphia is popping up. I already told you about how bad Manaya has been versus uh, Philadelphia in the past. And so definitely intrigued to go there. So let's get over to highest owned stacks now. Now, if you do look at the slate as a whole, there it's a fairly low scoring slate. There is one, two, three games with a nine total. Everything else is eight and a half or lower and a lot of games eight or lower. So highest uh, ownership, we got Washington versus Chris, Chris Flexen. Flexen just pitched a gem last time out and ruined my uh, prop bets because I had unders on him. But he's been good lately. 3.78 FIP, low whip, low ERA. Now he has a 5.4 FIP over the last 20 and a 5.5 ERA. I think that is more who he is, but I cannot discredit how good he has been in the short term uh i am interested in some washington stacks don't absolutely love them at the highest ownership stack but 57 percent i i don't care about ownership when it's that low for a five-man stack cleveland's popping up against michael lorenzen uh lorenzen you know 5.16 fip over his last 20 5.5 over his last uh five Definitely worth stacking against him a little bit. And Cleveland's just a pesky offense that kind of just gets it done. Houston versus uh, Stripling. Stripling's a decent pitcher, but Houston can get to pretty much anybody. So don't, uh, I wouldn't worry about Stripling. And Houston is absolutely in play as they do hold one of the higher implied totals on the day. Uh, it's a nine point game. Uh, game total or nine run game total and they are 183 favorites so uh their implied total will be one of the higher on uh, the slate if not the highest i actually do think they are the highest all right now highest projected stacks we got the dodgers we got washington we got oakland I've talked about all three of them already definitely intrigued with all of them highest value stack i gotta believe washington's gonna pop up here as is oakland uh both are extremely interesting today which also you know brings up the case that if you're going to stacks like oakland and washington that are cheaper you may not have to pay up for or you may be able to pay up for pitching fairly easy uh oakland all over the uh highest value as washington is as well um, so those are absolutely the favorite value stacks for today. I think uh, the White Sox should actually pop up a little bit there as well. And ceiling we actually already covered. So let's get over to FIP. Highest FIP of the day. Did I click it? All right, so Chris Flexen is the highest flip over the last 20 with Washington popping up as a stack. Makes some sense uh, to want to go there, but I do have to bring up that uh, 3.78 FIP again over the last five. Uh, let's check the highest FIP with shot as the lowest FIP. Now let's check the highest FIP over uh, 
the last five as well, just to get a little bit more of a rounded view. And that is Dakota Hudson uh, versus the Padres. Padres have been swinging it decently. They just came off of beating the Dodgers in two of three. I don't mind taking uh, some Padres for sure. I do have to bring up that uh, Kim did leave the game injured uh yesterday so hopefully he is able to uh come back he only had one at bat left the game hopefully he's good to go we definitely are waiting for more info there uh but all in all i am intrigued with the padres up oh, and this is one other thing right here we'll we'll go back to pitching because it does look like Yamamoto is probably starting uh for the Dodgers and coming into today I thought that was what was happening but I saw multiple places with stone so I just ran with stone so we'll head back to pitching to just to talk about Yamamoto real quick but highest implied run total we got Houston we got Boston we got Cleveland Tampa Bay Texas Padres and Washington now we didn't talk about Tampa Bay we didn't talk about Boston both of them are a little bit intriguing but both have good pitching matchups uh the big thing here is the winds blowing out in Fenway and when that happens there's usually a little bit more runs so I think they're definitely both interesting Texas is going against Tanner Bybee who is good but you can get he can absolutely get hit all of those stacks are uh, in play angels versus libertors kind of interesting for me libertors fip has been way low um so he's been pitching fairly good but he has high average uh exit velocity and hard contact rate so intrigued there cleveland has going up against a decent amount of hard contact too and texas bullpen isn't great there so those are definitely intriguing uh, let's get over to Yamamoto real quick so we can just go over him. Uh, Dodgers are big time favorites in San Francisco, which is a hitter friendly park. So it is definitely interesting. Yamamoto is coming in at one of the higher values, 2.2x, 23% uh, or 23 point projection, which tops the projections by quite a bit. Uh, we only have him at 11% owned at this standpoint. Uh, but I got to say, I'm very, very intrigued by Yamamoto. He's been pitching well. However, over the last five, his uh, FIP is, you know, almost 1.4 points higher than his ERA. So he's another guy that is, you know, likely due some uh, regression here. But all in all, this Giants offense isn't very good. I would not expect the regression to come here. I love the 27.8% K rate. Giants strike out a lot. Uh, I'm definitely going to be intrigued by Yamamoto. So him, Kirby, Singer, Vasquez, uh, Eflin, Crawford, all are pretty interesting to me. I'm probably not going to have much of Shata or Sanchez, but both of them will be in my player pool. If I get some of them, that's fine. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. I will see you later. Good luck. Let's win some money, and uh, let's make the most of this baseball season. Peace.